All roads lead back to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Uh, we now know that the infamous Bat Lady and and others were at a conference in 2017 with Anthony Fauci as the keynote speaker. So he is closely related to all these folks. We know that when the virus became known that he called the little circle of friends he had, not doctors, not the 6,000 people at the National Institutes of Health that are doctors and investigators and scientists and so forth. No, he didn't call any of those. He called his little circle to try to keep a lid on the narrative. Well, now we know that he spent almost a million dollars Chris Farrell, the Judicial Watch Director of Investigations and Research, joining me here. Chris, good to have you back. Great to be with you, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, we know that between, and this is from your research in large part, between 2014 and 2019, $826,000 uh, were directed by Dr. Fauci to this Wuhan Institute of Virology, where they do um, gain-of-function research. I'm guessing there's probably more money that hasn't been discovered yet, but this is just one of the avenues of cash and funding from Tony Fauci. What can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, you've, you've summarized it very succinctly, and that is that tons of taxpayer money. Uh, we know about some of it. I'm Like you, I'm quite certain that it's probably, who knows, you know, double, triple that when you get down to it, was funneled to various uh, research laboratories, and, of course, Wuhan is the most notorious because, you know, at, at one point it was debunked, quote-unquote, as being ridiculous that anything would leak out of the lab. And, of course, now it's the flavor of the moment. And now we're suddenly supposed to believe that, oh, gee, the intelligence agencies didn't really understand that they knew it was true or some other preposterous explanation. But since people on the right, namely President Trump and others in Congress, had raised suspicions, I guess Tom Cotton's one, a few others, that, hey, maybe this maybe this lab wasn't just sitting around trying to figure out ways to cure people. Maybe it was trying to figure out ways to kill people. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the bottom line. This gain-of-function uh, terminology, you know, it sounds like bureaucratic scientific double-talk, and to a certain sure. degree it is. Gain of function means, hey, we're going we're to figure out different new ways to use these bugs. You know, sure. That's well, what it really means. And here's the other thing, Chris. And, and I did this uh, in March of 2020. I said, look, based on what they're telling us, based on the cases on the ground that they have found uh, at the time in the state of Washington and California and elsewhere, I said it was most likely this virus was on the ground in the United States by Thanksgiving of 2019. And I had people on this program saying, well, that's not really possible. In fact, not only is it possible, it's now likely. Because you've got now yeah, exactly. evidence that the virus was on the ground in China by late summer of 19. You had three people sick in the Wuhan Institute of Virology with what very much appears to be COVID-19 infections, right? Not, not long after that. Right. And the problem is we're never really going to get to the bottom of it because the Chinese have told us drop dead. And they're... They're never going to give us interviews of the people involved. We're not going to get access to the actual lab information, the technical data, the real hard medical science stuff. The Chinese are never going to turn that over to us, you know, unfiltered or unmonitored by their state security service. Well, Chris, here's a bit and of science so, for you. Here's a bit of science. You can't interview yeah. dead people. <laughs> I just... Exactly. I'm going to throw that out there for you because, you know, some of these people, the Bat Lady, where is she? Where are some of these other key players? They have just vanished from the face of the earth, can't be found. I have my suspicions about that as well as you probably do, too. Sure, but, I mean, even going back forensically, looking at autopsy results, other lab tests and stuff, you know, the hard science guys want to dig into all that, and, and that would give them some real numbers and data, dates and timing and blah, blah, blah. You're not going to get it because the communist Chinese are going to, they're not going to cooperate. They're not going to admit their fault. It, it may have been deliberate. Yeah, it may well have been deliberate. Now, I think the, 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 the hypothesis that I put forth back in March of last year is that somebody was contaminated with the virus. They left the building. They went to the, to the wet market because that was a hot spot at one point. Uh, they they bought one of these bats for dinner or pangolin. This I think is what it's called. This anteater, uh, or whatever, and they contaminated their. Now 
maybe it was intentional, but it could certainly have come from somebody that was contaminated accidentally. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that at that point, the Chinese knew that it was going on. They covered it up. Uh, they had the World Health Organization tell the world, oh, it's not transmissible. It can't be, you know, it, it can't be um, passed between people. All false, all wrong. Of course, the WHO is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Chinese Communist Party, it seems. So we've been lied to. You're right. That's not going to change. Look, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest terror threats we've been concerned with for decades now is that uh, not the communist Chinese, but some other, you know, militant Islamist group, let's say, uh, stick somebody on a plane who's, you know, about one day into incubation of Ebola, and they fly from, you know, wherever in the Middle East, North Africa, and they transit major hubs like Frankfurt and Atlanta. You know, and just they get a plane load of people with Ebola, see what happens, right? So the notion that the Chinese would let loose a flu-like disease that had an extra little kick to it, even though, frankly, you and I know, 98.8% of people who get it get over it. It's not really that deadly. Is it? Is it horrible and bad? Yes. But most people survive it. It's not like it's a terminal uh, condition. It's contagion. Right. Correct. Um, anyway, you know, look, the Chinese, uh, we, we, we have known enemies like the Chinese, and then we have people like Dr. Fauci. Right. Uh, I think Fauci should be run out of town. I, I don't think it's going to happen. He's being, you know, they're circling the wagons at all the far left news media outlets and so forth. And Fauci is. They have to. Well, right. They have to, even though they, they have tape of him contradicting himself. What, over and over. Times? Yeah. Yeah. They have no choice. Uh, they they delivered the narrative uh, time and again for him. They carried the water, and now they're in a bad position. Chris Farrell, Judicial Watch Director of Investigations and Research. Always appreciate the conversation, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Quick break. It's the Steve Gruber Show. Uh, a bit of disconcerting news for some of you after the break.